Have you ever been greeted by a blue screen on your Nintendo Switch? Nah, not this kind of blue screen. I'm talking about this, a nice blue screen similar to my sexy blue mat. I thought it was sexy. Me too. It cost me freaking 100 bucks on eBay. What? Fingers crossed. No luck, no SD card included. Let's start a timer to get a feeling how long it will take to hopefully fix this poor switch. The stand is clipped into place and can easily be detached. To remove the screws, it is time to grab a screwdriver and two bits, one tripoint and a normal Phillips one. The shown screws need to be removed with the tripoint bit. I changed the bit because I chosen the wrong size. The correct size is a YOO. For all remaining screws, we use a OO Phillips bit. Make sure to keep track of the screws because they have different sizes. On both sides we need to remove the screw in the middle. One screw on the top and two on the bottom side. Now we can lift the back plate. Let's open the game card slot for easier removal. Hmm, it looks like we are not the first people trying to fix this beauty. We can see a lot of fingerprints and, hmm, what is it, thermal paste? The air vents are also broken. Let's remove all visible screws. After removing the screw for the SD card reader, we can lift it to remove it. Here we go, and we are greeted with even more fingerprints. Time to disconnect the battery. We should check how much voltage is left in the battery. Multimeter in DC voltage mode. 2.5 volt is very low. Typically we should see a span from 3.7 to 4.2 volt. Someone removed the heatsink before. The foam that fixed it onto the cooler is damaged. With the help of a tissue and IPA, aka isopropyl alcohol, we can remove the thermal paste. To diagnose this wonderful blue screen error, we need to reconnect the battery. The blue screen error is very likely caused by the SOC. It has hundreds of little connections underneath. It is called BGA. It looks like this. This error is usually caused when one or multiple connections are broken. When we have a closer look, we see that our switch console is slightly bent. This is already enough to cause some bolts to disconnect. Why does this happen? Many carry the console in their pants pocket, leading to great tension and bending it at the latest when sitting down, so don't do that. To test if we can fix this console, we try push down with a finger where the SOC sits while turning it on. This temporarily reconnects the bolts. Nice! Now we know that this is exactly our problem. We need to remove the shielding. Remember, always disconnect the battery while working. To remove the little connectors, I prefer a tweezer with some grip. Now let's remove all the rest, including the remaining screws and ribbon cables to free our mainboard. Let's remove it from the shell. Removing the shielding can be tricky. I use a tweezer with a fine tip. Here we go. The shield is now slightly bent. 
So this is not a big issue. We can bend it back in shape. Let's check together if I damaged something during the shield removal. Let's take a look with our trusted microscope camera. Overall, I don't see any damage. Nice. The old thermal paste on the SLC needs to be removed. I use a combination of a cotton swab, a paper towel with a sensor cleaning swab and a good portion of IPA. And I'm finishing it off with a toothbrush soaked in IPA. To fix our blue screen issue, we will try to reflow it with hot air. For this we need a lot of flux. Flux helps the solar flow and prevents any bridges of the little solar balls underneath our SOC. Let's remove the smaller nozzle from the hot air station. The wider outlet helps heat this big area. I set the hot air station to approximately 440 degrees C and around 50% airflow. We will heat the SOC evenly and ensure the flux sneaks under it. This will take some time and we will need to reapply flux from time to time to make sure nothing goes wrong. You see me sometimes poking the SOC from the right side. Why am I doing this? Our goal is to liquefy all of those little balls underneath this ship. With the help of a little nudge, with less force, the SLC should move a tiny bit. When this happens, we know that each ball is liquefied and we can stop the process. Unfortunately, I could not move it with a nudge during this attempt. Let's do a second attempt and use a proper PCB holder, because the blue mat got quite hot after our first attempt. In fact, we do the same thing as in our first attempt. This means a lot of flux and even more heat. I tried something around 460 degrees C. I keep notching it, but it won't move. I don't want to pump too much heat into it. More heat can cause more damage. And that is not our goal. We must live with the fact that the SOC was eventually partially reflowed. I think it could work with a maximum heat of 500 degrees C, but as I mentioned, the risk is very high to cause more damage than good. A little cleaning of our working space and we can check if it's working. Let's reassemble it. Put the screws back in. Hmm, I can't get in the speaker connector. Some of the flux we use looks like it is getting into the connector and blocking the way. The best way to get it working again is to heat it slightly to soften it. Yep, it works. The ribbon cable of the screen is next. I have a bad feeling. I can't get the cable into the connector. Houston, we have a problem. These connectors are known for being very fragile. The pins inside can easily be damaged. Vince from my mate Vince can tell you a thing or two about it. Under the microscope we can see the damage very well. One pin is out of its place. We will try to get it back in its place with the help of a tweezer. It is harder than it looks. Remember, those pins are tiny. Just keep trying. At least it looks better. Let's see if it works. Spoiler alert, it is not working. As you can see, it is again out of its place. Ugh. The ribbon cable already looks shoot up, so I want to avoid fiddling further with the damage connector. 
Before desoldering the connector, let's remove the memory. After removing the old connector, we will use a spare board for a working connector. But one step at a time. To remove the old damaged connector, we will use low melt solder. It helps lower the melting point of the unleaded solder from the factory. I highly recommend having this in your drawer. It is not cheap, but will last a long time. The flux helps us additionally with the flow of the solder. Now we put some low melt solder on our tip and mix it with the connector solder. I now try to heat up all the solder joints and push the connector out of the way. Yep, and here we see the problem with this approach. I ripped a pad from the PCB. Let's stop this approach and use another technique. We will heat the connector from the bottom to prevent burning the left plastic connectors on the upper side. Without any doubt, this is definitely the better way to remove this connector. Let me eliminate the reflections we got from the flux caused by my lights. Luckily we can straighten this pad. Now we put some fresh solder on the pads first. Straighten the left pad carefully and use some solar wick to remove the mixed solder from the pads. We must be careful because it is easy to rip the pads during this work. Give it a good but gentle clean. Put fresh flux and apply ordinary solder on our pads. Do you see this little ball of solder? This could cause us problems. I will try to remove it. Let's check with help of the multimeter if we have a short. I'm using the continuity mode for this. We have no short here. Perfect. This is our damage connector. It is time to look for a working connector on a spare board. I have several lying around. Found one. Let's put this board in a PCB holder and desolder this puppy. A puppy? We use the technique of heating the PCB from the bottom side. Yeah, that is much easier. Let's place a salvage connector on our blue screen board. Heat it from the bottom side to solder it in place. It took some time to get the alignment correct. With the help of a tweezer I nudge every single pin to see if it moves. The pins must be solid to be connected. Clean it with IPA, a toothbrush, the brush and some tissues. The cleaning is not over yet. I'm trying to get it as clean as possible for what will hopefully be the last assembly in the Switch's lifetime. A quick cleaning of our blue mat. And it is finally time to get our treated PCB back in its housing. Yay! Before inserting the LCD ribbon cable, we can look inside the connector shortly. 
It looks a bit messy. The residue we see here is flux. Let's take a brush with IPA and a tissue to clean it up. This looks much better now. All of the pins are in place. We should be good to go. Perfect. It works. Nearly ready to test it. You heard my relieved voice. It looks good so far. But will the console boot and allow me to play a game without crashing? Let's put it back together and check it out. It's time to clean the heat pipe. It should be residue free when we apply the new thermal paste. Speaking of thermal paste, I'm using a high quality one. The perfect amount of thermal paste. Hmm, I have heard about this somewhere else. This was a bit fast. We forgot to put the shield first. We will fix this in a moment. The shield also needs some cleaning. I think we have to redo the thermal paste move. Again, the perfect amount. We can install the shield now. The perfect amount. Okay, I'm going to stop saying this. Screw the heat pipe back in place. Making sure we have not forgotten any screws so far. We have not. Clean the metal backplate with IPA. Nope, not saying anything. Screw down the metal backplate and reinstall the SD card reader. Get rid of the awful fingerprints and other smudges. We put the plastic backplate on the device and put the rest of the screws into our beauty. We will stop the timer here. It took us two and a half hours to complete all the faults. After some final cleaning moves, we will try to boot up the Nintendo Switch. Do you remember that the battery was very exhausted? It will take some time to get to the point when enough energy is back in the battery to boot up the device. Brilliant! This looks promising. Let us grab my controller and proceed with the getting started. Lovely. Both controllers are accepted. No problems here. Oh, come on. That is so lame. Yeah, that is better. Thank you. Hooray, we are at the home screen. The previous owner got just one game. That is a bit sad. Let's try to see if the console accepts the game. But first let's see if the controllers get a charge. That looks good. Nice. Let's check out Mario Kart 8. Two games. Nice. Will it start? Yes, it will. Perfect. We successfully fixed the initial blue screen error, but was it worth it? It's hard to say. No forerun 100 bucks for the pure console. There's also no guarantee that this fix will be permanent. It can, but it could fail in the future. Have a heart for broken devices, give them a second chance, thank you and see you next time. Bye!